What is up, Whale family? This is Nightmare bringing you Hang Time, where we talk NBA, NBA Top Shot, the market, fantasy basketball, and all things hoops and hype. And uh, excited to have you guys with us today. A couple of cool things happening. First of all, you'll notice on my screen, we have a guest, a community member who during the last stream was eager to jump up and rip open packs with us. So we have Radke joining us today. Radke, how are you? Doing well. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on here. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Excited to have um, someone from the community actually step up and 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 join us once again. It's been a bit of a uh, a while. Um, real quick, could you tell us uh, when did you get into NBA Top Shot and were you an NBA fan prior? So uh, yeah, I grew up in the up in Michigan. So my days of back in middle school were you know the Michael Jordan era. So diehard Chicago Bulls fan loved basketball and then i kind of fell out of, i've always been a basketball fan but not uh, not a huge fan until i got back into top shot or until i got into top shot and it started i got back in or i got into top shot the middle of january luckily before the huge influx but even a couple weeks before that i saw a tweet from Ravel that was talking about it and i thought that was intriguing and i was like ah you know i'll look at that at some time then a couple weeks later i saw something else on it and I was like okay let me dip my feet in there and wow just those two weeks I wish I would have got in even before that because all those dollar series one moments were available it was it was crazy and it's been tough this past week to hold on to this hold on to this pack and not rip it open uh, I hear you. I hear you. But since since you were doing that, I ended up scoring some packs as well. And I figured we'd be kindred spirits and suffering waiting. But uh, it'll all be worth it to show everyone. Super dope. So growing up in Michigan, I have to ask you, Fab Five fan? Uh, nope. I'm close to, to Notre Dame. I'm like 30 minutes from South Bend. So I'm a diehard Notre Dame fan. Oh, OK. Well, at least you didn't say Duke. So that Notre Dame's acceptable. That's right. <laughs> Very cool. Well, glad to have you with us. And, you know, we'll chop it up and, and talk uh, NBA and Top Shot here. Feel free to chime in. You know, love to hear your thoughts um, where you'd like to share them. So yeah, Nightmare, real, when, when, when did you get started in Top Shot? Well, it's interesting. You know, I, I heard about it and I had signed up in the summer for, you know, some notifications for beta. And I just didn't really put the value proposition together at the time. You know, I'm like, eh, do I, you know, do I really want to spend this money? I didn't really make the correlation to what it would become. Like a lot of things that were happening in the NFT space and even in cryptocurrency, you think there needs to be some kind of steady buildup. And I'm I'm typically a cautious investor. Like I always make the analogy that, um, you know, if it came to an investment strategy, I like to long the retest, right? I want confirmation that something's going to do well before I, you know, go in hard. So I didn't really want to take the leap of faith. I waited until I saw that it had legs. And as you know, that's a little bit too late, right? Because everyone that was in early had amazing EV on these packs, but more, more so we're able to score some super, super sick serials and amazing cards and, and hollows and all sorts of things. So that's a whole different ball game now. Um, talking, you know, tens of thousands of dollars instead of, you know, hundred dollar or thousand dollar packs. Oh, I know. When I first got in, like I said, in the middle of January, looking at all these series one moments for one and two dollars, and I was scooping up some of them, but I was like, ah, eh, you know, I don't know if I want to spend any more on this. I don't know where this is going. And boy, I regret that, but I'm glad I have what I have of those series ones. Yeah, and I, you know, being involved with NFTs and with Whale, I kind of got into this backwards because when I saw the utility to be able to use it in the Fantasy League, then I said, okay, now, you know, it's worthwhile for me to make us, you know, make a little bit of a splash and get involved because though I don't think I have the same opportunity from an investment perspective at the time, at least short term, I still enjoy basketball. I did collecting cards. I have fun playing in fantasy sports and things like that. So let me set myself a little salary cap and buy some players that I think would be viable. Um, and so I did that. And, you know, next thing you know, you're hooked and you're buying all sorts of things. You're enjoying challenges or you're, you know, you're enjoying representing um, and showing friends moments or trying to get cereals. And, uh, you know, as you could imagine, my uh, salary cap has now been inflated i guess the collective bargaining agreement went through and uh you know now it's a new ball game but it got me in because of the utility and actually liking basketball not because i was trying to be a speculative investor and something if if nobody's opened a pack it's the 
uh, what's the the best word to explain when you're opening a pack? It's it's intense and the 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 feeling of opening and ripping a pack open is is pretty amazing. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, um, some people may have grown up collecting sports cards, and I did. And yep, I didn't too. really, I never really bought them with the intent that I'm going to get something that could one day be millions of dollars. I just thought it was really cool that I had a chance to get players I loved or would get excited about, or I get a bunch of bums, right? But it was kind of the equivalent of nowadays people like these blind boxes, you know? Yeah. Um, there's a property that you like, you could get something rare, different rarities, different cool variants, same type of thing. It's a, uh, and back, back, in, back when I first started, it was, it was amazing being able to go into the, into the marketplace and just grab as many packs as I wanted. I mean, I would sit there and, okay, I'm going to do five today. And then the next day it's like, oh gosh, I, I got that itch again to open some more packs. I'm going to get another five and hope my wife doesn't kill me. And then, uh, yeah, I want to get a couple more. And, and now it's, you know, you're, you're lucky to get a pack now. Right. Yeah. That's, that's definitely, definitely changed. Um, so we'll be excited at the end when we can share that with everybody. And I'll be yeah. excited personally seeing you open your pack and open up mine. But real quick on the NBA front, you know, NBA news kind of slow right now. Um, we're heading in the stretch run to the playoffs. There's about three weeks left. So, you know, injuries continue to pop up and be an issue, especially as it relates to card values, or I keep saying cards, but moment values on Top Shot as well as our fantasy league, right? So, you know, some of the most prominent star players that put up the greatest numbers are going to be a priority for some of these teams to rest and make sure that they're healthy going in. So we saw a lot of that this past week. I know it decimated my uh, lineup. When we look at the results, I had an embarrassing finish, um, but it's part of the course, right? We've been talking about that happening as we head into this stretch run. So playoffs are looming soon. Maybe there'll be something cool that Theo whips up for the playoffs. I know there's still been some um, different ruminations going on on the Swish uh, chat room over on the Top Shot Discord and some you know mentions of it on ours also. So we'll see what happens. But other than that, you know, things continued. The last time I think we talked about Steph lighting it up. Um, I think Hooper dude actually linked us to an article earlier where it showed that Steph set the records for most three pointers in a month with 85 i believe so uh more of the same i suppose this week as far as nba news goes but as far now, as now, now steph this week he's only got three games is that correct am, am i right on that um i could i we'll, we'll check that at the end but even gotcha, so okay. but even so even so with the numbers he's putting up i'd be more oh. confident running steph than lillard or someone else yeah yeah no kidding yeah yeah and so with regards to top shot itself um you know some news this week i guess they they, they onboarded some new players as certified ballers so you know carl anthony towns and, and paul george recently were added um so from a marketing perspective you know continuing to get embedded with the nba itself uh but from a market perspective you know when we look at what was happening with top shot in the market um we saw a dip in sales i think it was something like 17 million dollars over the past week just shy of that and it was down about 25 percent versus the prior week where i think there was a lot of action in the marketplace relative to the challenges that were going on and you know we've seen this lull continue as things kind of uh come down off the hype cycle number one a little bit um, with NFTs and Top Shot in general. But number two, we're in a slower period of the NBA where things are kind of on coast as we head into the playoffs. But also, you know, there was a lot of headlines with this collector dingling in the market, making a lot of moves. Some of them were actually OTC, right? So that's not going to be counted in some of those sales numbers. But we're certainly seeing the continuation of the market kind of steadying in itself uh, relative to the whale vault which is the anomaly, you know, we talk about this all the time, still near that $50 million range. And again, this is on moment ranks where they take into account the Jersey numbers, the serial and what that is relative to value. Obviously the whale vaults in a unique, unique situation with a ton of number one hollows and cosmics and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, again, the highest, um, the highest rarity cards continuing to show some strength there. But what, what are your thoughts on that, Reki, as far as the EV dropping and then the market overall? Well, I mean, I think the EV dropping, that's that was never sustainable. I think 
Jack Settleman, he he had a tweet, you know, it was like a month ago when the market was starting to go down and he said, you know, I'm, I guess you're probably, you're familiar with him, I'm sure. And yeah, he made the tweet that, you know, the market's, you know, going down and it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be okay in the future, but the, 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 um, what, what was, I'm trying to think of the exact quote, but it was like the, the, the life-changing buys are, are no longer going to be there as in, you know, the, the one and $2. So yeah, I, I see a, a lot of people are, you know, they're hesitant now because the EV is not there, but you know, it's, it's all about long-term to me because once we start or once they start, you know, really marketing over all the, you know, even more countries, it's going to, it's going to blow up. And then these early series are going to be, to me, are going to be very, very valuable. Yeah, definitely. And and I think you guys have heard me enough saying that I think that long term we need the values of, you know, base common cards of of bench players and just everyday players to be obtainable for people. You know, uh, someone that's not from the NFT community or or not as familiar with, you know, speculative investment that just wants to get in because they're a fan, they want to participate, they're not going to want to pay five, six dollars for, you know, the, the ninth guy off the bench. So we need to make it more sustainable by having those values make sense and not the, the other thing is people are, are upset about people that come in and just try to flip and that being their primary objective. Well, then that EV needs to be, you know, adjusted or else you're just asking for that. Right. So we're getting there and it, it's going to be more akin at some point to the model that we talked about, like with with traditional sports card collectibles. Right. But with a lot more utility and a lot more cool interaction and functionality for it. And but, I think something too that's deceiving with with the you know the market values in that is it's it's all based on lowest ask, which is not really a good perception of what a moment's worth. You know what I mean? It's because I've got um, you know a, a three digit moment that's you know if if I'm looking at what it's what it's worth, it's going to go based on lowest ask, which is you know it's going to be a lot more than what the lowest ask is. At the I know they're starting to change up some of that, but a lot of the stuff that's getting thrown out there that I've seen is is based on all the numbers are based on the lowest ask and that's just that's just not accurate. Right, right. Yeah, and, and so here's a great example right here. Here's the account of dingling on Moment Ranks. And like I mentioned, Moment Ranks likes to account for the low serial, the jersey numbers, things of that nature. Look at the divergence between what the moment value is that it approximates based on those factors versus the lowest listing value, right? Like two and a half million versus nearly six and a half million. So a $4 million, um, you know, differential there. So it's substantial, but you know, with regards to dingling coming in, you know, I know on office hours, someone had asked what our thoughts were with regards to that. I think it's a great thing because it shows that someone from traditional markets and, and crypto and, and speculative investing thinks that, this is just a lull and long term, you know, Top Shot is going to be a significant property and, and things are going to continue to um, grow in value and um, utility. And so they wanted to take this opportunity during this market lull to make a stand and, and build their portfolio, scooped up a ton of number ones, spent about two million dollars in some of these purchases, if you include the OTCs and, you know, it's 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 reassuring i think to a lot of people to see that um and know that someone with that kind of capital has that kind of vote of confidence for the platform did you listen to him on the first mint that what was it yesterday or the day before he was on the first mint uh i did hear him in spirit through luke's uh <laughs> zordon voice there i did yeah. yes Yes. Um, and so like, here's something really cool he did. He, he's scooping a bunch of number ones and he put together, you know, this showcase of uh, players with number one serials he thinks are the future and could be of significant value going forward. So I thought that was cool that he's using the, um, the showcase format to try to make a statement and do something unique with it. But uh, I, I, you know, I'm not so sure, sure about Scary Terry being on here just because I have a little bit of a... Uh, um, uh, PTSD from his heckle and, you know, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, stay with the Celtics, but I do like some of these picks and would agree that some of these are good picks. If you want to try to stake a claim in someone that has a bright future. So I thought that was very cool that he's done that and that he's going to be a major player, um, in the marketplace. And so a couple of other things of note, um, 
obviously, you know, they had office hours and they had talked about some different things going on with regards to Top Shot. Not a lot of new stuff, a lot of reiteration of um, questions that have been asked in the past, a lot of answers um, that are just echoing things they've talked about in the past. Of note, people talking about marketing, they said marketing is pretty much going to be on coast, at least until the playoffs for the time being. Um, Besides some of the groundswell marketing stuff they're doing with things like the, uh, you know, the showcase reward contest that they have going on, the certified baller showcase challenge and whatnot. The other thing that they they mentioned that really kind of caught my ear was that they'll be revealing plans soon for what's going to happen with the remaining series one moments that haven't been distributed. So, you know, they got a big batch that they've been holding back. What exactly they're going to do with those, we don't know, but. Um, you know, those will be of significant value because of the interest in, in that they're, you know, series one. So I'm interested to see what, what comes of that. Other than that, most of the uh, office hour stuff was more of the same. Um, the certified baller showcase that I referenced, I'm sure all you guys know it because you see it's spammed all over the place. But if you want to, um, you know, create a showcase, I think you need to have three of the certified ballers, which are the NBA players that have top shot accounts um and you get x number of likes uh through may 4th i believe it may be 20 likes i don't recall the exact number um but you get 20 dollars in dapper credit automatically and then if you can really dominate that and get a ton more there's opportunity for some rare packs and things of that nature so um you know it if that interests you, then you can go ahead and uh, participate in that. Personally, I'll be glad when it's done, just so it doesn't dilute with a little, you know, with as much noise. That being said, I do understand the um, strength of viral marketing and what they're trying to do and getting in front of some new people. So hopefully it works well for them and we could take a little bit of a break. So I, I want to just uh, add some conversation here. So what what is your response to people that, that are telling or that are that are saying you know i'm i'm too late into the into the top shot game because when i get when i get told that i i explain to them look how many nba fans are there in the world and and we're just we're just so early and I, it's still in the early adoption phase and i think that's that's just something to and you may have discussed this in past ones but it's just it's something that i like to i like to discuss with people that when they say you know it's, it's too late for me to get in you know there's no the value's not there, and it's it's to me that we're, to me we're still early, so the value's still going to be there when another million people join, and you've got some of these series two cars. Because think about next next season, series two are going to be, you know, a lot more rare. W what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I I would ask what those people's benchmarks for being early is, right? Like someone saying that they. You know didn't buy link when it was pennies or or whatever they 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 wanted the the home run to 100x well if that's your criteria for being successful then i suppose but you could still you know get a card or get a moment that could go 10 or 50 or whatever it is um just by where we are in the adoption cycle i think we have 300 or 400 thousand users max at one time that have vied for a pack and that's not even touching on the millions of NBA fans in the United States, let alone internationally. Like in Asia, the NBA is huge. A lot of other countries, it's a huge, huge market. So that's why we're in beta. They're trying to square away a lot of the different features of the platform so they can handle that kind of volume. When you think of all the hiccups that we encounter, and these guys are doing a good job of introducing fixes and streamlining stuff. Um, but we still encounter a lot of hiccups and we're not even one one hundredth of the, you know, possible users that will have interest in this property, in this platform. So I think there's a lot of opportunity, a ton of upside. I do think the cards, even series two, I think cards with badges, I think new rookies are always going to be emerging. Superstars are going to be created out of nowhere. Right. So there's always going to be great opportunity to get involved and, enjoy it while you're doing it you know just like nfts i talk to anybody and say hey if you're gonna buy it if you're gonna participate in something also do it because you actually appreciate the artwork or you you know you like the utility of it or it's something that you enjoy that way you can 
get through any lull in value without really beating yourself up over it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy just for the sole purpose of trying to appreciate and make money. Um, I would buy because you think it's cool and you want to participate and you know there's a good opportunity to do that, but you also have some, in my opinion, you should also have some other reason that you want to take part in this ecosystem and this project. Yeah, I agree with that. And as long as you're willing to be patient and hold, there, there'll be value. That value will increase, you know, in five years, what today's moments are going to be worth. If that's, if that's what it's solely based on for individuals. Yeah. Imagine like we talked about the packs. Imagine when you were young, you ran to the, the corner store to grab some baseball cards, or basketball cards, and then you were, you know, you'd be pissed because the next month the value wasn't where you needed to be. Your friends would be like, what are you talking about? It's been one month. You're buying stuff to see like if this guy becomes a star or whatever, right? Like we have to um, put it in the right perspective as far as what this is. Certainly the timeline can be accelerated, but you know, this is a long game too. And people shouldn't lose sight of that. And so here we have um, the premium rare pack drop of the past week. So the metallic gold LE drop series two drop to about 18,000 packs were made available. Um, interestingly, this had a set of requirements that were slightly different than the prior. And so you needed to own one of the MGLE moments previously or have two rare moments or have 15 moments at the time of the snapshot as you can see here i did not qualify for either of the first two i only had 38 moments don't know exactly when that snapshot was taken but again they've told us that these requirements could change and vary from you know drop to drop so nothing set in stone but i see they continue to try to tweak this and fine tune it I know there was some feedback on the requirements for the first one that they weren't effective because so many people qualified for what was less than 3000 packs. So they made an adjustment here. And I think the net result was, um, they were, they were these 17,000 packs available for this rare drop. And then there was also 50,000 rebound packs. They were made available so they used the rebound pack again kind of the consolation prize if you don't get a good spot in the queue um only about 67 or so like less than seventy thousand people qualified based on these requirements so you know you had you know almost between 20 you know you had a one in three one in four chance to grab a pack um and so better you know a better uh, funnel, I suppose, to get this into the hands of people that they want. I do know even within our own community, there were people that are very active that said they did not qualify. So there's certainly opportunity to tweak this. And from what we're told, they're going to continue to do that. Uh, interesting thing real quick of the rebound packs available. They didn't go through all of them. Only uh, I think 28,000 were purchased. So either people weren't interested in the base packs because you know they just realized they didn't land this rare and got out of the queue or um you know maybe that has to do with the market and the ev kind of settling where it's not a guarantee that you wait for this base pack and you can flip the cards for a significant profit but first time we've seen that i think at least since i've been buying and uh, it's definitely of note to see what would happen in the future with more base packs the other thing I wanted to mention is the Cool Cats 4 Challenge. We talked about this last week. I was on the fence on whether or not I would actually participate and do the challenge. And I actually did, thanks to the feedback from you guys and some of our discussion that we do at the end of hang time. But you never know if a challenge is going to become a qualifier um, for some of these rare packs. Personally, I'm not sure I love that because I think that people should collect and participate the way it makes sense for them. And prior to this, I really didn't have a lot of interest in the process for collecting uh, for challenges and then having to get rid of the cards you didn't want initially, et cetera. But that being said, I was happy that I did this because now I qualified. And also I was able to take that process from you know beginning to end. Um, I almost actually didn't do it. And it was because of a user experience. So. 
I have my mind set on doing this so that I have a challenge done. I also think that 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 Russ card is actually a, a pretty nice moment. Um, but what was happening was I made the purchase for the first moment I needed. Um, in addition to, I already had one cool cat, so I needed to buy nine more in total. So I was trying to grab the other cool cats and the other base cards. And as you know, there was a timer involved at this time, right? There was a five minute timer between purchases that I could do. Um, but when I went to go make, I, I want to say my third or fourth, third or fourth purchase, it told me that I was blocked and it was for some reason it was not available. I, I could not do it. The transaction was blocked and I would have to submit a ticket to, you know, dapper help or something of that nature. And I couldn't figure out why I was using the same method that I'd used to make all kinds of market purchases before, um, using the same card, um, at times using my dapper balance, uh, and it just continued to be blocked. So I thought I was going to abandon it. And I actually put one of the moments that I had bought for this purpose back on the marketplace. So I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm not, you know, between the timer and then this happening. And this happened a few times over like an hour. So I'm not going to do it. And then I just happened to give it another try without sending in any ticket, without changing anything in my browser or my payment details. And it went through. So it wasn't a published hiccup that I knew about but it obviously impeded my experience. And that type of thing is the type of thing that they're trying to work through in the beta because we're not someone as vested as me. Like I do a weekly show on this, right? Um, they probably would have just stopped participating at that point. So I just found that interesting. and wanted to share that experience with you guys because obviously you may have experienced it or possibly new people trying to get on board and participate this way are going to experience that. So just something to keep our eyes on and know that that's part of the reason that we have to have these maintenance periods and all these attempts at tweaking it before they take that marketing, before they take this on a much broader and bigger scale. Uh, that being said, the actual card itself is pretty dope. And the value um, was decent for what happened. I think so. It's at 167 bucks now. I think I paid $340 in total uh, to participate in the challenge. And obviously, you know, I have a lot of those cards still because I'm lazy. Didn't put them up on the, up on the marketplace yet. Um, but you know, net net, this will be close to a you know a wash for me as far as money spent to obtain the moment. So glad that I did it. Um, and it was an easy one to accomplish and get done. That being said, there is a new Cool Cats Challenge running right now. Cool Cats Challenge 5 for a Fred Van Fleet moment. That's pretty cool. Chucks this up, banks it, gets it in. Um, this actually, the requirement for this challenge is five base set common cards. So, you know. You don't have to put out a lot of money to be able to participate. Um, if we take a look at Evaluate Market, where they track the challenges, just over $200 now to complete this one. So if you're like me and you were interested in, in trying to do it just because you want to make sure you qualify, maybe this is a good one for you. Um, I can't lie. I also do like Russell Westbrook. So to me, it checked off a couple of boxes to do the prior uh, challenge. Also in Top Shot News Friday, we had a surprise stress test drop. They dropped 100,000 packs, which is a lot for a stress test, uh, but they jumped out there. So they, they came out with the base set series to release 30. And I actually only knew about it because Hooper Dude jumped on to our Top Shot room on our whale discord and gave us the heads up. So props to Hooper Dude, who does a lot for the community um, that actually spawned the top shot role that we now have so that when things like that happen, we can give a quick ping to everybody and it calls their attention to whether it's um, results and winners from the league, pack drops that we're trying to alert each other about just so everybody that's in the know um, can share it. If it wasn't for that ping or seeing that message, I wouldn't have even known it was a pack drop. So uh, pretty cool. I was able to school, score a pack there as well as Joe Boo came through for the metal gold, metallic gold LE earlier in the week for me. Um, so Joe Boo actually working his magic this week. He's no longer angry. I gave him enough chicken and rum and cigars. 
So on to the Whale League results of the past week. Taking a look at the leaderboard, Navigai is crushing it. A mainstay at the top of our top 10 every week. Navigai, major props to you. I think we have to have you on to give us a little bit on your strategy because you seem to be consistently um, dominating here. So PDH, one dime at a time. I think someone was asking who you actually were on Discord. So if you could let us know, it'll help us speed up the process of the payouts. I know those always get hung up and it's because we don't want to give the payouts at different times to different people because it's tied to the value of whale and we want to make sure everything's fair and equitable. So if you could let everybody know who you are in Discord. Crypto Mike, another name that we see frequently, secure the dub who comes through with lineup recommendations every week. Props to you and thanks for always sharing that with everyone. One shining moment seeing you up here as well. And then we got a couple of mainstays that fell just shy on the outside, right? So Beastlick, Irate Emperor, a bunch of folks. And this week was a little bit killer because some people uh, that were played that had significant amount of games and were um, poised to do good numbers got sat because of injuries or for rest concern and if we look way down way down this may be my worst finish i think there i am 49th man i'm embarrassed to show you guys but trey young lost a bunch of games um being sat for those purposes and joel Embiid came out also so let's not even talk about miles turner who i threw up and immediately someone told me joe boo was not happy with me Hey, guy, guess what? Joe Boo came through towards the end of the week, so I guess he forgave me. But another um, interesting week when it comes to fantasy. And, guys, I think personally I've just been overthinking it a little bit, right? If I had just gone with my gut and said, hey, these guys should crush it, I probably would have done better. But I think I'm getting into the overanalyzing things that, uh, you know, who, who mentioned that a few times was our friend Guster from the Burn podcast. So not great for me. Radke, are you on here? I'm trying to find where you ended up. You're going to have to keep going down to find mine this week. There I am. Nope. It was, uh... So Luca, Zach, Harden, Rudy. Yeah, all, all good picks, um, especially with the number of games and what was – what was going on but like we talked about a lot of variables as we head into the end of the season and you weren't the, you weren't num you weren't last on the list so no shame in having a crazy week when a lot of people get sat that's for sure it reminds me of the last week of fantasy football of the regular season when you know week 17 when everybody sits their starters right right yeah and that's why sometimes yeah. they, they run it two weeks right sometimes that'll be a two week yeah. stat yeah or the older or they're cut off on week 16 so you don't have to worry about week 17. exactly uh we'll take a look at hooper dude always puts this together for us on top of also alerting us to pack drops who weren't in the know about so thank you hooper dude um the scoring leaders for the week so joker um Giannis coming through and zion so the typical top three despite um number of games um if you would pick those and you know, not really giving it much thought, you wouldn't have been in better position than someone like me who really mulled over you know, who I think would do it based on schedule and everything else. Uh, Steph crushing it from a three point perspective. Um, Michael Porter, you know, a dark horse in there, uh, putting up some decent numbers, whether or not that's sustainable, you know, that's another question. I wouldn't run anyone except Steph, regardless of number of games, quite honestly. And Westbrook continues to be the cheat code for assists. We look back at the results for this week. You know, with the exception of this Draymond Green miraculous pick by PDH. PDH, props to you for, for that one, for sure. Um, far head and shoulders above everyone else in this category, right? I think I scooped a Chris Paul just to have... Um, when Trey Young wasn't available for me because I was going off my budget uh, salary capped picks here. But if you have a Russ, you just always run him and you will don dominate. And then in the block steal category, you know, a lot of people came out with Turner because his card had dropped. He was accessible. He had played one game coming back off the injury. He got sat again. It was not really um, a contributor 
you know, Rudy also has been um, kind of falling off as far as what he's been serving up. Uh, Nerlens Noel, who I've picked up on my budget salary cap, continues to actually post better numbers, even though I had walked away from him overthinking it. So still a bit of a wild card, I think, this category as we head into the last couple of weeks. Um, who will do what? But I, I decided personally to go with um, some of the mainstays and not really shuffle the deck too much. So for this week, I am running Giannis Zion Luka for the assist with the number of games that Dallas has, right? I think a couple of teams have three games. Um, Dallas being one of them. Steph obviously in the three-point spot, and I'm going out with Rudy because it's a roll of dice for me, quite honestly. Uh, Joe Boo, please um, don't serve up an injury report later on this evening and tell me something new is going on. That being said, Secure the Dub, as mentioned, always puts together this really sweet lineup recommendations for the week. If you haven't, go give Secure the Dub a follow on Twitter. Some great Top Shot talk and other stuff as well. But uh, yeah, here you go. He says right on here, there are three teams on a five-game week, OKC, Dallas, and Toronto. If you're in Whale, join Top Shot so you can stay up to date on the news. Secure the dub next time you post your lineup. Feel free to uh, tag us with the Top Shot role, and then everyone can come in and take a look. So on the two-pointer perspective, um, you know, with his analytics, also the usual suspects here at the top, you have Zion, Giannis, um, Joker, Luca. He's saying could be a dark horse, but you know, look at his average per game, juxtaposed with the number of games. If he's going to play all of them, not really sure. Here's my guy from last week, just rubbing salt in my wound, Joel Embiid. Um, from a three-point perspective, you know, really Curry is the pick. And if you want to uh, play the lottery and roll with someone else because of number of games, feel free. I'm not comfortable doing that. Um, from the assist perspective, like we had just talked about, Russ, if you have it, is almost a must pick. I'm going with Luca here, understanding that he may not play the full five games, but I do not have a Russell Westbrook. So for me, it's the most viable option with Trey Young not running. And on defense, he talked about some of the things we just mentioned as well, right? So the Miles Turner injury is such bad timing. I am sorry, everyone. That may have been me pissing off Joe Boo. Uh, Nerlens Noel has been rising, but he only has a three-game week. So, you know, obviously that hurts his chances. Um, you know, Rudy has been slipping as well. We mentioned that. He's not even... Um, in the top five as far as results for the past week but i'm taking a bet that he may return to form this week hopefully i'm not once again overthinking and crushing my lineup Raggy, what are your thoughts on the lineups this week oh let's see i've got i've got the same lineup as you except i've got joker in there and, and no giannis but the other four i have too interesting interesting yeah, Joker's obviously always crushing it. Um, Clear-cut MVP front runner, in my opinion. Um, but it just seems that whenever I run run him, uh, he he, you know, plays a more balanced game and only serves up a handful of uh, field goals and a ton of assists and ton of rebounds. So great for him, amazing player. Sucky for my lineup. Um, I think you will do really well because I did not pick him this week. So I think he's going to go off and drop some 40 point games for sure. And I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't have a Russell Wilson or a Russell Westbrook assist. So I'm going with Luca also. Okay. Okay. All right. So if it comes down to a close one, we know, you know, we know what we're watching when it yeah. comes down to the wire. And so now, um, the moment we have all been waiting for, when I say all, I mean me and you, our ability to open up some packs and share that with the community. My my crack hands are finally going to be able to, to stop. So I have to ask you, what you know, how, how did you uh, maintain your self control over the week? Oh, it's it 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 hadn't been bad at all because I've got I've got quite a few that I've sitting here waiting on. So it's. I knew I wasn't gonna gonna get in on this cool cat, the challenge this week. So it was it was pretty easy for me to 
hang on. Wow, to wow. So I was thinking you're sitting here on one pack. You have a bunch. Is that part of your, you know, your strategy is to buy packs and just hold them and and rip them down the line when the value could be crazy? Yep, that's what I, that's what I'm planning on some of them. And so yeah, I was gonna rip the cool cats, but then I wanted to wait for this to rip it. Oh wow, a cool cat. Well, well, we're psyched. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Let me let me put this in total focus, so we can. Uh, all geek out on what we're about to see here. All right, so I'm gonna I'll go ahead and rip the cool cats one. I don't know if you can hear the sound coming from my. All right, let's go. Low serial number. Let's which see it. The, which one's the cool? Oh, they're all common, so it's all going to be the same. Uh, let's go with this one first and see what we got. Lakers, uh oh. Anta, oh, I'll take that. Nice, especially, nice. Especially not a bad serial number either. A four That's digit. A way to start. Yeah, I'll take I'll take Anthony Davis all day with this one. Drew Holiday. Not bad. That's the cool cat then it must be because it's a two thousand. Yeah. Or of twenty thousand. Oh, I was hoping it was going to be Steph. Now, do you have a strategy in like where you pick? Like nah. which one you'll be first? No, nah, just random. I, I feel like I got to save the center one. It's like part of my mojo. Huh. I, I should probably switch that up because it hasn't worked well for me. Brian Clark, so uh, an okay pack here. Not bad, a cool cat and Anthony Davis. So yeah, I'd say that's that, a win. Yeah, yeah, Anthony and a four serial number, Anthony Davis. Very cool. Thank you for sharing with us. Well, thanks. Now I can uh, now I can relax a little bit now that I, yeah. I'm yeah, not, I'm not yeah. sitting on that knowing I'm gonna have to wait to open it because I, I was anxious to open that one. Let me switch over to mine here. I have two packs to open as well. So. Let me make sure I get the sound also. Okay, guys. We'll start with a base set. This was from the um, the stress test on Friday. You better go with that middle. Oh, all right. If that's if that's your mojo, oh, nice serial number. Wow, nice. That's that's nice. There you go, Trey. Some nice cards. Some nice players. Yeah, that's a that's a nice moment there. Wow. Nice. That was a good pack. It was, yeah. There's n nothing crazy on the serials and, you know, um, but all, you know, all-star players. So I'll take it. Yeah. Nice moments all around. So we will go back and open the metallic gold LE. Now you have me envious. Did you score one of these or not? Nah? I did not know, but I'm glad they do the rebound pack. Right. Yeah. No, but, that's. Well, you said earlier, I was surprised there were so many rebound packs not taken. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not sure if that's reflective of, you know, what's going on in the marketplace or just, you know, people not as interested in hanging in the queue. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens when they do a dedicated, um, a dedicated base pack drop, I suppose. I yeah. can't really, I can't really count the, you know, the stress test because a lot of people weren't even aware that was going to happen. They, they sold through all of them, but I think, um, I think, uh, over on the first mint, they had mentioned that they didn't do it initially. Like it took some extra time. The queue wasn't initially filled entirely. 
Yeah, right. I think they said that everybody in line got a pack, and it, it, it ended up going over maybe just a little bit. The queue line, I think, is what I remember them saying. Right, right. All right, guys. Uh, let's see if Joe Boo comes through for us. Serial number. Uh, I'm a C's fan. I like it. A debut. Nice. That's it. Yep, debut. Oh, nice serial number on that. Nice, Russ. All right, here we go. Not, and number 100 on the dot. That's very nice. Yeah, that's a nice pull. Yeah. Very cool. Very good. Well, thank you for hanging with me today, Radke, and uh, yeah, man, pulling that pay pack especially. Yeah, and if you uh, if you need any more packs open later on down the road, let me know. I've still got a couple that I'm sitting on. Yeah, I don't want to put the pressure on you. I know, <laughs> you know what it's well, like. Uh, I, you know, it won't hurt my feelings if I have to come on and open a pack. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a look at the uh, the chat, see if there's anything that people wanted to talk about while I'm on here, relative to the NBA, to Top Shot, to uh, anything going on in the community. So I'm just scroll up a little bit and make sure we see anything that was mentioned. Someone actually mentioned that they can't support Top Shot because they don't agree with the NBA. If Dapper Labs and the players are getting all of the revenues, I'd be down. Musashi, I'm interested to hear why why you feel that way about the NBA. Tigbo agreeing that uh, Dingling being bullish on the product and scooping up all those number ones and taking a position is really good for the market and for the product as a whole. L Least Comic Standing saying he's feeling very frustrated about the requirements and how they were set up. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is, Least Comic Standing, as far as you know, trying to make it accessible, but trying to weed out the flippers and get it into the hands of people that would really value it. I've got such mixed emotions on that because I understand why it's in place, but at the same time, it's how do you tell a newcomer or someone that's just, you know, pretty new to it that you can't get your hands on one of these because of requirements. It's, that's a fine line there. Yeah, he also makes mention of that dichotomy. You know, it's a weird balance of feeling like the cards are too expensive on the open market because there aren't enough of them, but also you want the card prices to be high and values to be good so you can make a profit. But you're right. It's kind of we're kind of in the in the middle ground. I think they're trying to experiment, quite honestly, and feel it out. I don't think we're set into any particular model. I think they're going to find what works best. Um, but I do think they want to temper the the investment flipping kind of aspect a little bit, just because it's harmful to people that would be, you know, just average Joes that are interested in the NBA that want to onboard and be part of it. My Lenny likes the way the pack jiggles. Thanks, my Lenny. Um, Tigbo wants to know what are our thoughts on a bidding system? Any thoughts on that, Radke, as far as uh, the marketplace I goes? Uh, I think it's. I think you'll get a get a more accurate reading on what the market actually is if there's a bidding system. 
So I, I'm, I'm all for that if they can implement that. I hope they'll do it on a trial run shortly. I think I've heard that they are working on pushing that out. So I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah, I think they did mention that in one of the office hours, either last week or the week prior. I think it would be good just because it can help establish a common price floor. Like there's it's, always it's, Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. I was going to say it's going to it's going to um it's going to stop the undercutters too. Which that's why the that's why it keeps the floor keeps going lower in my opinion. Right. The, the undercutters are Right, 100%. Someone just grabbed the pack. They were hoping to get you know, um, something premium that they could flip or they're just trying to get out of it as soon as possible and make a minor profit. They don't care relative to the cereal or whatever, and they're just going to undercut whatever the lowest price is, right? But if everybody sets orders and say they're willing to buy a card at a certain thing, it kind of establishes what the market value is. So those are anomalies. Those aren't what's going to kind of cascade values down, at least not to the same degree that it is now. Yeah, exactly. Musashi responded when I asked, uh, you know, why they felt that way about the NBA. They're the same as the record companies. They enslave and exploit their product, which are people. Musashi, I'd love to hear. I, I don't disagree with you, but I just think about the uh, the collegiate athletes and that sports model and what that means. If the, if the NBA is the most egregious um league or, or organization doing that college sports is a whole nother animal he also mentioned that he sold his first pack of cards at 10x in one month yeah there was a there was a period there where things went absolutely crazy but i think you know not dissimilar to market cycles and and nfts as a whole kind of went through a run and are kind of recalibrating a little bit right now yeah, it was. I bought a Series One LeBron, maybe in early February. For it was like I got it for like six fifty or something like that. And at one point, it was you know the value was ten thousand, and now of course it's come way back down. But right. it's it spiked there so high for that short period of time is ridiculous. Yeah, no, I I know some people that were involved early just because they thought it was cool and they ripped a bunch of packs and they were just sitting on everything they had. And I'd look at their portfolio and say, holy smokes, you could retire, dude. Like <laughs> you could be done, yeah. but they did it. So now they're not, you know what I mean? But they didn't intend yeah. to anyway. Being a, being a paper millionaire doesn't mean anything. That's right. Um, Lady Warboss says, that's how the physical card market works. When I want to see what a PSA graded card is worth, I check recent sales on eBay, um, which are often auctions. And it's nice to have that and the buy now option as well. I would agree. I would agree 100%. Even look at the Pokemon market, which is an animal. And, uh, you know, can imagine if it didn't have that system available. The MLB tops packs on wax are about 10x right now after the drop last week. I was, Radke, did you, did you take a look at that? Were you interested in that? Uh, yeah, I got... I got some pre I got a premium pack and some standard packs. How, how was the experience for you? Because a lot of people were talking about it. They they bought packs and didn't get them or they got charged for stuff that they didn't, you know, end up buying. It was all kinds of mixed um information coming in, but a lot of it was people not saying the experience really wasn't great. It was a it was a pretty rough drop, but if you go back to in February how bad the top shot drops were, it's similar to that in my opinion experience really? in both of them yeah it was it was kind of a mess the the drop but it, it's the first time so you know you, you gotta expect some issues yeah i i did look at it um to be honest with you i i don't love wax as a platform i just it's been I've tried to use it for some other things, not even for investment purposes, th things I just thought were cool. Like I like Street Fighter. I thought the Godzilla drop with uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong was cool and stuff like that. And it just was a nightmare between trying to set things up and get things working correctly that I abandoned the process. If uh, you know, efficacy is the key to unlocking this for a lot of people, that was the antithesis of it. It was like, it was, I'm pretty, I'm pretty knowledgeable and it was a challenge. So 
between that and then things not working correctly um, in my prior experience, I looked at that. I'm not a huge baseball guy, though I do know some about it. Did collect when I was younger. I just gave it the pass. Uh, my worst experience with wax is trying to unstake some wax coins that I staked. And thankfully, Tigbo walked me through uh, being able to unstake them. Very cool. Lady Warboss says the garbage pail kid drop was smooth for me. I'm glad I started there instead of the MLB drop. I love garbage pail kids. I did. That was my first kind of exposure to some of their NFT stuff. And I thought about getting in, but I think I saw it like just a little bit past when it dropped. And that was my intro trying to get into the aftermarket ecosystem. And then you know, I, the I garbage pail kids. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just go ahead. I'll say the garbage pail kids. That's, that's my first, that was my first experience as a kid. You know, when it's like season five was out and I want to get a C series one, you know, a series one pack. That's how I kind of see Top Shot, you know, in a couple of years, you see like a series two pack that you can get and it's going to be a lot more expensive. That's how that's how it was when I was a kid for Garbage Pail Kids. I remember seeing the the, the earlier the earlier series and I always wanted to get some of those, but it was a lot more so. My, yes, my folks, yes. My folks would not get it for me. My, I had my so my whole bottom drawer in my bureau was full of garbage pail kids, and I don't. My mother got mad at me for something. I don't remember what, but she threw them out. She literally threw them away. I think oh. she, she was like, "These are disgusting" or whatever. But I, speaking of garbage pail kids, do you remember there would always be that one kid that was super lucky, and his father somehow or someone got them the full uncut series? Yeah, that was yeah, that yeah. was the full sheet. Before it was yep. before it went through the the cut and the cards were separated, there needs to be an NFT equivalent of that. I tell all these people mm -hmm. making these NFT cards of types, like we we had um, some of the people from F Man on and things of that nature. Like that would be super cool. That could be like the first car. That could be the first block on that series blockchain is all of them in the one, and then you can start having it off the. So it'd be a it'd be a one of one. Right, that would be that would be incredible. I might have to get back involved in that. What was the other one on Wax that interested me? They had an Atari cartridge, yeah, kind of thing that appealed to my, uh, you know, my my retro geek sensibilities. That I, you know, I looked at it and then was like, nah, and gave it the pass. But, you know, maybe I'll have to give it another look if so many people are saying that you know they worked through it and they're happy that they did with the MLB drop. All right. Well, I think that's a great uh, point to jump off of and, and leave Garbage Pail Kids at the top of my mind. Radke, thank you so much for joining us today for Hang Time. It was a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. That was that was fun. And I always right. enjoy ripping packs. So. Awesome. Uh, well, I have a feeling that uh, you'll get some more and may, may have the urge to share with us again. Have a good one. All right. You too. See you guys. Take, take care, everyone.